Hello. Mm -hmm. I think I'm getting a suntan here. Uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today it's January 18th of 2021. I think it's Martin Luther King Day, I think. January 18th, I think. Not sure. Um, anyway, it's uh, 7 16 a.m. in the morning. I've been up quite a while. I messed with some stuff on the computer, watched a bunch of YouTube videos, uh, played a whole bunch of Civilization VI for quite a while. Now I want to go to bed, but we've got a very small grocery delivery coming from Walmart, and uh, my son is sleeping. My ex-wife is confined to a wheelchair, so she can't bring it in, so... Looks like I'm stuck doing it again. Seems like it always happens. Uh, but my son does an awful lot around here, grown son. Um, I finally set this, turned this thing on. It's an LED light. I think, well, wait a minute here. Let's, I can show it to you. This, well, I purchased this in June of 2020. Just got around to really uh, hooking it up. Works off USB. Got it on a tripod. Uh, and uh, it has a choice of, you know, different lighting. I hope I've got it on uh, sunlight or whatever that is. Well, I think that's 56. You know, I hope it's on the back you can push. Uh, you know, I think it's easier to show it to you, but it's right there. I'm not sure if I should maybe bounce it off the ceiling or if this is the way to go. Uh, Built-in rechargeable battery, of course. Uh, it, you can also dim it, and then you can choose the three lighting temperatures or whatever. And 3200K to 5600K. I can see where it'd be really useful for like close-ups of items. There you go, you can see, you know. The back there, that the big round, is, that's the adjustment for... And then these three things over here are... Uh, that shows on the charge, how it's charged up, and then as it's charging up. And then the button next to it is uh, for turning it on and off and that type of thing. Uh, and then on the side, I don't think it shows, maybe it does with this here. Yeah, on the, you can see there where on the side is the uh, where you charge in the USB. Oh, that's where that came. That little one that came from. Got a kind of a cheap ass uh, USB cable, but it doesn't really matter. It works, you know. Actually, I'm using a different USB cable, one that I had around it. Would reach and actually, I've been charging it off uh, my monitor, as on three USB three on the side, and I forget. I think there's one under under the, on the back. That uh, so, but any USB would be fine. So that's how it's adjustable. Let me, let me see if I point it up towards the ceiling. If that's going to, I don't think it's going to make any difference. I don't think it's quite bright enough to. Of course, if I turn some lights out, it would. I'm sure bounce it off the uh, ceiling. Let me see what it looks like here on, let's see, pull this up here. 
I think that does look better. Wait a minute. Bring it down. Yeah, that's too... I think that does actually look... That looks better. I do think so. Let me lock it in here. Not my eyes, too. That does look better. I think. What do you think? So, uh... See, CNN News, shouldn't be anything big today, right? This is Monday. I hear our cat, Dee Dee, crying. I think she wants food. She has plenty of food, but she, she likes... Every time now I get up and walk out of this room, she tries to lead me over to where we we have a big container by the sliding patio door that we feed the outside cats as they we keep some food out there and so Dee Dee thinks our cat food is better. <laughs> um, this uh, video, by the way, I did watch this, the one that they say is shocking new video from inside the it uh, it really does. Uh, sound bad you know the uh, people in there you know shouting where's vice president pence and uh, where's Pelosi? does anybody know where Pelosi? that type of thing it sounds it would be i think the people they were so angry and so mad and uh whatever that if they had run into one of them uh, i think Something really bad might have happened. A little headline here, why experts fear the capital attack is just the beginning. I think there are going to be uh, lone wolf type things. There'll be people who are so pissed that uh, where normally they would just sit at home and uh, beat their wives or something. I think now there's going to be some of them that are going to go out and be, you know, driven to do something. And the more things go against, you know, the more they're going to feel like, you know, that they, they're right and they'll be, you know, so I think there are going to be some lone wolf type of situations that are going to be going to be bad. I think everybody needs to, you know, kick in and do the, you know, do the right things. You know, the airlines is, the airlines are saying that they're, they're you know, cracking down. Uh, one airline said that uh, they weren't going to serve alcohol on flights, I think it was, to and from Washington, D.C. for <laughs> for a week or something. No, you know, well, of course, I'm not a drinker. I do not drink at all. Both my parents were alcoholics. I wasn't abused or mistreated or anything, you know, not. But uh, I'm not a drinker at all. And I don't think they should be serving alcoholic beverages. Beverage. I don't think they should be serving alcohol on airlines. And I, then the problem is, you know, you've got all these drinking place, you know, eating and drinking places at the airport. You have people waiting for, I don't know what the solution, you know, I don't know what the solution is, but alcohol, I worked hospital security for 30 years. You probably get tired of hearing that, but that's a long time, you know, that's just one of my jobs though, but I mean, generally it was almost every night that I had to deal with drunks, you know, that that came in. And uh, uh, it's just, but I can understand, like, uh, this is Coke, by the way. <laughs> I drink Coke all the time. And, um, you know, I like hamburgers and chicken and all types of things and it I would not really enjoy you know uh, 
hamburger drinking a milk or a lemonade or coffee or, you know, it's good when I'm having a Coke with it and, you know, other thing, everything like that, you know. So I can understand other people be the same way, you know, having a beer or, uh, you know, maybe having a highball or something like that. You know, and if you're at the airport and there's, you know, especially a nice, you know, some nice eating places and you sit down with by yourself or with somebody else and you're having, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be eating a steak and drinking milk or lemonade or I don't know, you know maybe some people that's what they want. But so I don't know what the solution is, except they should not positively be serving alcoholic drinks on an airplane. Of course, then you have an airplane, you know, somebody that's what flying from. Uh, California to New Zealand. What is that? A, like an eighteen-hour flight or something? Rather, wow, that's a long time. My parents couldn't have gone eighteen hours without having a drink. That's for sure. So I don't know what the answer is, except they shouldn't be serving for these domestic flights anywhere in the United States. They should not be serving. And then two. Uh, I mean, there's enough crap of of flying now. The seats are too small. Uh, the bathrooms are too small. I mean, uh, I, I raved about this before, you know, that people flying should just protest and not fly and do different things to mess up the airlines and to get the message across to them. Give us decent sized seating with, you know, room or else, you know, we're going to, you know, because they, I went through the whole thing, you know, of having rotating days, you know, get together on the, on the internet or whatever, get together. And, and so the airline can't prepare, you know, uh, all of a sudden it's going to be, you know, because if, if you let them know, okay, every Monday we're going to not book on Monday, well, the airlines will just not have the, you know, the, uh, the aircraft there, but the thing to do is at the last minute, you know, pick a, a thing and pass the word at the very last minute. And then the airlines are going to have all those airlines, you know, all those ships, planes sitting there and uh, no passengers and stuff. I think they would get the, I think they'd get the message. I'm not saying that they're immediately going to rip out seats, <laughs> but I think when they, in the future, when they ordered aircraft, They'd make sure that, you know, I mean, it's just like you're a bunch of cattle or something in there. And so on top of that, and then having to wear a mask and all this type of stuff to deny somebody a, you know, a drink, I saw. But anyway, I didn't want to rave and rant on that. I haven't got the... Uh, virus vaccine yet. I haven't even checked to see if if it's available someplace, you know. My ex-wife, she went and got the first shot and uh, the company that normally transports her and other people, they have a choice. You know, it's Fort Worth. It used to be called Mitts. I don't know what it's called now. And they'll come in a bus type thing and pick you, you know, pick you up and some other people. And I forget what you pay, $15 or whatever. Uh, just slightly more than uh, you pay if you could get to a bus stop and uh, get on the bus. They have ramps that come up and do, for regular buses, you know. But this is a bus that comes and picks up people that are in wheelchairs and or are disabled in some way. Uh, she called to make the, you know, she called and got an appointment <clears throat> for the next day. I knew that was a mistake as soon as I heard her say, they said, oh, we have an appointment, you know, open for, you know, and she said, to, I thought, this is not gonna, something's gonna happen. So then she calls, because usually you call them bus transport people the day before you uh, 
Anyway, she called, and she always gives too much information, too. You know, gives her name and all that, which is great, you know, all that kind of stuff so that they can pull it up on the computer. And then she goes through, oh, you know, I have, uh, I have post-polio syndrome, and I have this and this. And then, uh, she, and then she said, and uh, I was tested uh, on, and they said when, she gave the date. And they said, well, okay, we need you to send us a fax. Who has fax anymore, you know? I mean, actually, my printer will do, you know, scan, fax, and... Uh, but they said, well, yeah, then you have to fax us the... Uh, and so I helped her, and she went to her medical records thing chart thing online and copied the part of the lab work that showed that, you know, she had had it and it was negative, you know, on it, everything. And she called them up and the, you know, said, could we email it to you? And they said, okay, here's the, the thing. And then it's one of those things where the email address, come, the thing comes back, this person is, uh, on vacation for a week and won't be back till you know next week and then she uh, called back and this is on a timeline of she needs to get it you know we're talking about like down to an hour or two uh, before you know they have to do it before they cut off date on the day before or whatever and uh, They said, okay, we'll give you this other email address. And then, so that person apparently was there because then that person says, no, that's not, uh, that's not correct. That doesn't, it doesn't mean negative or whatever. I forget what it was, but it, <laughs> there was the lab work, you know, results of negative. Uh, and so, so anyway, uh, then my ex-wife called back or something. Or else she asked, I think then she asked, she said, if I hadn't have said that I had the uh, the test done, and the lady she was talking to, a real nice lady or whatever, said, yeah, if you hadn't have said anything, then they would have just, uh, Buzz would have come and the person would have scanned you with the temperature thing and ask you if you've been out of the country and, you know, what the, the questions they ask. So, uh, I told my ex-wife, you give people too much information. Like the remember the West Wing episode where the press secretary goes to the uh, hot, the White House attorney or whatever when uh, Jed Bartlett is in trouble for not telling everybody that he had MF. Multiple, no, not multiple squirrels. I forget. Anyway, so the attorney says to uh, the press secretary, uh, "Do you know what time it is?" And she says, uh, "You know, three fifteen. And he says, "Don't ever do that again." And she says, "What?" And he says give too much information and then he says you know what time it is and she says yes I do and he said okay <laughs> so, you know so how did I get on that subject must have been something that popped up here on the internet what more sounds like huh China debuts a new train prototype that can hit 620 miles per hour. People are messing around with uh, Home Alone 2. People are editing out the Trump appearance when uh, the boy goes to the hotel and uh, there's Trump, you know, and so he asked Trump, you know, uh, where's such and such? And 
you know, Trump Point or something like that. Anyway, people have been playing around with editing out or putting, you know, doing, well, it's only two minutes. Let's see if we, uh, Now that President Trump will soon be heading home, his Home Alone 2 cameo has been getting the heave-ho online. Excuse me, where's the lobby? Down the hall and to the left. Thanks. Trump is being replaced with everyone from Jabba the Hutt to Dolly Parton. But when someone suggested replacing Trump with 40-year-old Macaulay Culkin, which did happen, Culkin himself... So, anyway, um, guess that's it. Um, oh, that was the light. Yeah, I think, think the light is better uh, that way. Well, it's better for my eyes, so. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching.